What do you think, Dan? What do you think of Uncharted? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so this was my most anticipated game right. of the year. Um, yeah, you were talking about trying to get the yes. rights to make yeah, it. Yeah, I would love I went to Persia. I, I love know. in terms of the games. I love that, and, and, and in terms of the genre of movies, I I wish I could make this movie. I w- I think this is as good as as many movies. I agree. Oh my gosh! If only that thing could come true. Welcome to Cord Killers, the show about holding your breath and screaming, as well as watching the stuff you love when you want, where you want, however you want. I'm Tom Merritt. Hey, man, I'm Brian Brush, and more importantly, that was a clip from 2007, in which a young, starry-eyed podcaster named Dan Trachtenberg joined his friends on The Totally Rad Show and talked about if only he could direct a movie based on the Uncharted franchise. Flashpoint 2019 Guess who was just named as the director of the Uncharted movie, dude? We live in the best timeline. This is the best universe. (laughs) So wait a minute. While everybody else is out there making that dorky meme of like, here's me 10 years ago. Here's me now. Dan Trachtenberg's like, oh, here's me 10 years ago. And here's me now doing the thing that I was talking about. Here's me 10 years ago. ago. I don't know. I'd like to, I don't know, direct a movie based on Uncharted. Here's me now. I'm directing a movie based on Uncharted. (laughs) How great is that, dude? That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Uh, Good good work, Mr. Trachtenberg. Uh, And we we wish you all the best uh, in making the Uncharted movie. In these Uncharted waters. Yeah. And and by the way, look, look, it's not for us to say this. and, And I'm sorry, Tom specifically told me not to say this, but it occurs to me that one of the common tropes in Uncharted games is there's always a podcaster slash author and a magician in his 40s. So if, if, if I mean, if the movie is anything like those games, please I, I, just give us a call. Have your people call yeah. our people. It'll be fine. You need you need that. You need that. Yeah. And, and I, I told Brian not to say it because. You know, we need to negotiate these things. <laughs> well, especially because we were holding in our back pocket the fact that 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 the end credit should be played by an independent songwriter and friend of the show, Christy Cates. Christy, yeah. thank thank you so much for joining us. I'll do that. I'm on. I'm on. Where? What? Okay, done. <laughs> You're welcome, Dan Trachtenberg. Look, I don't want to say we're doing our, our job, your job for you, but I'll just say you're welcome. How about that? Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. How are you guys? <laughs> We're doing Good. well. Of course, uh, we we have now completed uh, having the the team cord killers from the movie draft on. Uh, Brian and I are have recused ourselves from Team Court Killers in the movie draft. It's Malango <laughs> and Christy Cates, so uh, it's good to have the com- the complete guest set now. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I'm a little sad about my movies, but you know that that's okay. Don't it's all right. know what you're I'll talking there. about. <laughs> Well, folks, uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about. A uh, bunch of things cap- happened at CES uh, last week to talk about, and a few things that happened just today, including a trend, which is our primary target. Now, I've got three things in the primary target uh, that I'm going to throw out here, okay? Three, three things, one of which was announced just today. Uh, first is not the thing that was announced today. Amazon launched its ad-supported streaming service through IMDb called Freedive last week. The service lists about 130 movies and 29 TV shows. They, they say they'll keep adding them. Uh, you can watch it through the IMDb website or on Fire TV devices, which of course are made by Amazon, which owns IMDb. TV shows include things like Fringe and Heroes and Gilligan's Island. Uh, film selections are Memento, Awakenings, Few Good Men, you know, so, so you get some classic movies in there. Now, Hold that thought, Amazon, with their free ad-supported service. Plex announced it is in discussions to get movies to bring to a free ad-supported service. It's also talking to content providers about offering subscriptions through Plex as add-ons to the Plex Pass. Plex recently began offering the music service title bundled with Plex Pass, so there's a little bit of precedent here. So Plex, taking a page from Prime Video from Amazon, saying, hey, we want to do a service that is both free and ad supported, but also that you can add things to. And Sling TV says, hey, we like that idea. Let's do it first, or let's do it now. Uh, Sling TV launched its free tier of service on Roku to former customers last year. And today it has extended it to newcomers as well. So anybody can install the Sling TV app. You don't have to log in and have an account. You can watch some free stuff, more than a hundred hours of TV shows and movies. And Sling TV, is offering access to standalone paid channels 
like HBO, et cetera, just like Prime Video, just like what Plex is wanting to do. So, Brian, here we are looking at the new trend of consolidation that we'd been talking about for a while, starting to come to more and more services, sometimes combined with free ad supported uh, selection, sometimes not. So, so here's my question. Uh, I'm, I'm going to kick it back to you, Tom, before we ask Christy. Uh, but, but is this consolidation or is this commoditization? Like, um, uh, uh, consolidation would imply that it's like, okay, we want one portal through which we get everything that we get. But commoditization, as I mean it, is like uh, treating HBO like lettuce. It's like, uh, yeah, we have lettuce. We're a grocery store. Of course we have lettuce. Every, there's nothing special about lettuce. It's everywhere. Yeah. Like, like, like no. is that what we're seeing? It's a great point. It's both. I mean, Plex specifically is saying uh, people have too many things they have to pay and choose from. We want to be the solution to that. Uh, we don't want to be, even though they're offering free ad supported service, they're like, we don't want to be the channel. We want to be the place where you have the channels, whether it's Netflix, Hulu, et cetera. So we'll consolidate it all into one bill for you. But it's because we've commoditized as many of these services as possible so you can get your HBO lettuce. Well, so let me let me kick this over to Christy with the question of which is more interesting to you, the idea of the commoditization of HBO or the idea of of of, of our continued attachment to the F word of free? Like 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 does free seem as magical now as it did five years ago, ten years ago, fifteen years ago? Cause because personally, I'm entering a phase where I'm I'm sort of over free. I just I feel like I feel like people ex expect free. I mean, I feel like people really, really expect free. I mean, as far as like even starting with music, people expect music to be free. People expect content to be free. And looking at all three of these, it's like they all had the kind of the same idea. And it almost looks like television. Like you watch the show and then you watch some ads and then you watch another show. My other thought on it was, are they just using these to kind of draw people into their pay services as kind of like, yeah. You know, as like an entry level, hey, look, we gave you free stuff. Now, don't you want to pay for some stuff, too? That would be great. Come on in and, you know, like, here's some candy. Now, here's the whole cake over yeah. here, but you have to buy it type of thing. No, it's funny that Sling is definitely doing that. Sling yeah. TV wants you to start using the Sling app to watch the free stuff and then go, ooh, you mean I could get the sports game or I could get the HBO uh, and, and they'll upsell you into becoming a subscriber. Plex, on the other hand, is saying, we just want to divorce you. Plex, Plex is speaking Brian's language. We want to divorce <laughs> you from thinking about the source. We want you to open Plex, see movies and TV shows that you want to watch, and click on them to play them. And we'll worry about handling subscriptions and everything for you in the background. Hmm. So, so when you look at all, when you look at both of them, though, like you're talking ad supported. You're talking like you're going to watch a show. Are they talking about interrupting them with ads, or you just have to watch an ad in order to watch the program? Do we I mean, know? It, it, uh, it depends. Uh, so, so the, the the best analogy we've received on this so far is somebody reminded me because I am super allergic to ads when it comes to my video entertainment. Like I'm, I feel like I'd rather pay a dollar ninety nine and and get the yeah. and own a thing that I'll watch once than the alternative. Uh, but then somebody pointed out, it's like, uh, hey man. When you first sign up for uh, Spotify, almost never do you go straight to premium. You always start with the ad supported version of Spotify. And that is the gateway that brings you in. And at some point you're like, you know, it would be even better than this is not having to hear ads. And so once I started looking at uh, looking at it through that lens, I became okay with it. But but still, I'm, 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 I think I'm of the four of us, the most allergic to ads here. Yeah, I mean, and I'm noticing too, like the, the content available looks really small, like 130 movies and 29 TV shows. That's not much at all, really. I mean, it yeah. sounds like a lot, but it's not. I, but I, I guess for free. I think it works best for Plex because Plex is just saying we're gonna throw we're gonna throw some free stuff in there, mm -hmm. so that when you're looking for something to watch, you'll have more to choose from than you realized because we're we're spiking the punch with a bunch of free movies and TV shows. Amazon can kind of do that too, although they're putting it on IMDb. So I feel like they're not doing this to drive people to Prime Video so much as trying to get people who are using IMDb to realize like, oh, I don't even have to leave IMDb to watch this thing that I was looking up in some cases, right? Uh, because I can just watch an ad and then, then watch this TV show. Sling TV, I think, is the hardest sell. I don't know how many people are gonna go to Sling TV just to watch a small selection of free movies and yeah. TV shows, especially because getting back to Brian's point about commoditization, this free stuff is commoditized too, right? You're never going to get an exclusive on the free stuff because exclusives are what you 
pay for. That's what HBO and stars pay for to put on their pay tiers. The only examples I could think of that would be a counter to that is that uh, Sling is pretty well positioned in the sports live space. So I could picture specific games, especially we're coming into March Madness time where they could say this game versus uh, these guys versus these guys. Uh, watch it free right now. Just download this app and go. But that's not what they're doing. Mm, you're right. OK, they should do that. Listen yes. to Brian. Okay. Sling TV. <laughs> you're welcome, Sling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that's a that's a really good uh, that's a really good idea. But you know, for a long time we've been saying, hold on, the market will shake out. I think this is one of the, I don't think this is it, but I think this is one of the shakes. Right? It's like okay, well, we've got a bunch of people trying to solve the problem of I've got too many subscriptions and I don't want to have to keep track of them at all. Uh, and Plex is is being very smart by presenting itself as the solution to that here's the part that i'm almost hesitant to acknowledge is uh the brilliance of the strategy like um my 14 year old daughter of we have a family plan on spotify where all four of us you know have accounts or i guess there are five of us uh mm -hmm. but 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 the point is uh, everybody's covered. I've already paid the premium rate for our entire family to listen to Spotify. And then my eldest, uh, 14 year old Penny was like, Hey, can you get me into Spotify? And we got up to that barrier of like, Oh, I got to find out wait, which one are you? And how are we set up? And where's that, that thing? And she, and she just cut it off and was, and was just like the pain of just going through the login was enough for her to say, uh, whatever, I'll just make a new account. I'll do ads. It'll be fine. Yeah. So, so it's like there exists this gap that can be taken advantage of. And I think that that in that regard, that's the reason all of these people are moving into that space. Well, there is also the idea of supporting the content you love directly. Brian. Tom, that's crazy talk. Nobody does that. There's no business models in which that works. You and I know it. Christy knows it. Uh, the whole damn world knows it. Wait, I think maybe you misspoke. Name, I, I don't, no, I, 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 Tom, I defy you to name one example. Name one thing that's been independently supported in which there have been no ads for, I don't know, let's say five years or longer. Go ahead. I dare you. I dare you. The show we're on right now? <laughs> okay. I defy you to name two things that... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes, of course, Tom. Uh, I, 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 I'm a huge fan of paying for the things that you love. And if you love Cord Killers, if you think that we're worth a buck an episode, we would love to have it. Head on over to patreon.com slash Cord Killers and join the 1,371 patrons who are our bosses. Uh, we've mentioned this before, Tom. I, it's a new year, new me. Uh, we are we are what like forty six dollars a month shy of the our, our target budget. So if you've been enjoying, maybe maybe you got in early. You're paying thirty cents an episode. Maybe you're paying a buck an episode. You want to go to two bucks an episode. Now is the time. Let's get us up forty six dollars. That's all we're asking. Forty six yeah. more dollars than we're doing right now. We we need to get rid of our change drawer. Be be the coin bank for us and just just round that number up. Be whatever. the coin bank the world wants you to be. Exactly. The be the change. <laughs> be the change. I get it. That's okay. Good. I'm really glad good. both of you caught that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about how to watch. That's what you're paying us for. Or are you? <laughs> NBC Universal plans to launch its own streaming service in early 2020. And they've got another. We could have almost put this in the last segment. It will be an ad-supported service available for free to its pay TV subscribers in the U.S. Now, stop stop yelling, everyone. Hold on. The ad-free version of the service will be also available for a fee. So if you're a pay TV subscriber to NBC, you can watch the service without paying but with ads. Or you can pay to watch it without ads whether you're an NBC subscriber or not. So those of you who are like, I don't have cable, I'm not an NBC pay TV subscriber, don't worry, you could still get it, and in fact, you'll get it ad free. NBC said it will continue to license content to other studios and platforms, so it's it's trying to say, hey, we're not cutting anybody off, Netflix, Hulu, everybody, will still you know, produce shows and deliver shows to those services, but we will retain rights to certain titles for this new service. Tom, don't misunderstand me when I, I try to phrase this correctly. I hate how diabolically clever this is. 
this is creating a tier above a tier, right? Yeah. We, because the original thing is like, what are you talking about? You guys are broadcast. You're broadcasting stuff. It's ad supported. It goes out to everybody. And it's like, no, 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 no. But it's even better if you're a pay subscriber, then you unlock all of this on demand stuff because you can't get on demand with broadcast. And now they're adding a tier above that. What if you're somebody who just straight up pays us even more money on top? What if you would like it on demand and ad free? I'd hate to say it, but in my heart of hearts as a consumer, I feel like like there is a value to that and they're right. Like the economist in me says, yeah, that's there to be exploited and they should exploit it. The evolution of this is AMC and FX asking their pay TV subscribers to pay $5 a month for an ad free version of the app, but they don't offer it to anybody else. It's only, you have to authenticate with cable even to pay for the ad free version. NBC's just going one more step and going, well, we should make that available to other people too, you know? And, and it's quite possible. We didn't see amounts here that you might have to pay more if you're not a pay TV subscriber and they might give you a discount if they're like, Hey, you're, you're paying cable already. So yours will be $5. But if you're not a pay TV cable subscriber, yours is going to be $8, but conceivably you'd be able to authenticate through sling tv or playstation view or something like that anyway christy is this sound in any way appealing to you assuming there's something on nbc you want to watch now that's the thing i was just going to say yes because i've been on the show before talking about how how my cable provider has kind of backed me into a corner where to get the amount of internet that i want i have to actually take the lowest tier of tv i don't really want it at all so something like this where it's standalone if if there's some other way to get that internet at the high rate that I want it at and then just pick and choose the channels that I want, I would do that. I think that's a good idea actually. So you can just stream in the channels you want. Maybe you only want three. I, I mean, two or three cable channels is probably plenty for me actually. You know, I don't watch that much cable at all. So to be able to choose the ones you want and just pay for that service and you're still getting the on demand and you're still getting, you know, all the other services you would get if you were on a full service cable network. Yeah, I think it's, a little bit sneaky, like Brian said, but it's also a really good idea. So. I mean, it's it's maximizing the opportunity for, for yeah. all those institutions. Uh, I got to be honest, uh, speaking of maximizing opportunity, my bandwidth of attention is maximized by Bobcat in the chat who suggested the episode be called Crocodile Tears, T-I-E-R-S, <laughs> which I thought was pretty brilliant. That's very apt. Uh, <laughs> applause to Bobcat. Good job, uh, Bobcat. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, because <laughs> NBC's trying to address problems here. And I think they learned from CISO. I think that my theory has always been that doing something like CISO was as much a data collection exercise as it was a, a legitimate product. And they said, okay, people don't like having to pay for more things. So if they're already paying us, let's give it to them free with ads. But people don't like it when they, you, you ask them to pay for something that they're already paying for. So for the people who aren't pay TV, We'll give them an option too. Like they're they're trying to navigate these waters, and this is the kind of experiment that needs to be carried out to see how this is all going to end up working once we've we've kind of settled on a model for this basically post cord cutting world that yeah. that we're starting to live in. Well, and, and we've and, talked and, about this before, making it. Oh, sorry, Brian. Kind of um, like a kind of like a menu. I think we were talking about this last time I was on, where it's literally a menu. You pick the channels you want, and you just tick them off, and you pay X a month for the ones you want, and the rest of them. You don't care about because you're not watching them. So yeah. why do you have to pay for them? Well, they show up in Plex. So, so <laughs> I, I think we're finally zeroing in as consumers and also uh, the providers are realizing that there are different things that, that people value. Uh, uh, one is the illusion, whether or not it's real or not, of having anything you want whenever you want. And that's traditional cable, right? Theoretically, with the DVR and a cable subscription, you have the the, the super buffet of everything that, that there is to, to want. And theoretically, everything you like is already recorded on your DVR. VR. Uh, if you want to pay less, then it's like, okay, just tell us what you want and we'll bring it out to you and it'll cost less, uh, but 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 you won't have nearly as many choices. And then now we have that extra question of like, uh, will that be with or without ads? And, and so now it's like, if what you want is only the things you want and without ads, then it seems to me fair game. I, I, I hate saying these words, but it seems totally within bounds for NBC to say, great, that'll be five bucks a month. Yep. Now, here's the thing. Uh, CBS All Access is CBS's version of this. Now, NBC says by 2020, uh, early 2020, they're going to have their version. For the major networks, uh, the major broadcasts, that leaves Univision, Fox, and ABC. 
Uh, Univision, we've talked a little bit about their add-ons that that they're marketing out there, along with things like Sling TV, and they they have their own service. So that's their version. That leaves ABC and Fox. Well, ABC and Fox are going to be Disney's two plays, I think, and they're going to be split between Disney Plus and Hulu. Uh, here's why. First of all, Hulu's preparing a redesign. Uh, if you're worried about that, they're getting rid of the current lineup page, that page you get when you first enter the app that's kind of confusing, and they're trying out an unwatched in my stuff app that just shows you the the shows you haven't watched that that you're following, or a picks section that's a curated page by Hulu, and they're also making some tweaks to menus and stuff like that. They also, as they prepare to take over ownership of Fox, Disney CEO Bob Iger says that Hulu is going to remain the home to more adult-oriented series, classic television shows, exclusive Fox offerings versus the Disney Plus service, which will be kids shows, Marvel, Star Wars, etc. I'd hate to admit it, but this totally solves the <laughs> ongoing question in my mind of what to do with Hulu. Um Doggone it. I think I think you sons of bitches have done it. Uh, well played, Disney slash corporate America. Uh, you, you, you got us right where where it counts. Well, I, I, what we're going to end up with here is a situation where uh, you can subscribe to the NBC service. You can subscribe to the CBS service. You can subscribe to the Univision service and you can subscribe to Hulu, which is Disney, and, which is ABC and Fox. And then there's Netflix Disney Plus, you know, and a, and a few other Prime Video that are kind of out there halfway between that and your HBOs and stars and everything. We're starting to see a little bit of a roadmap here. So uh, uh, I'll, I'll kick this out to to all three of you guys. Um, uh, it seems to me that there's one move that nobody's made yet that I think would absolutely yield more watch time. But for whatever reason, feels so gauche that nobody's done it yet. We've gotten hints of it. We've watched Netflix go from a menu to auto playing trailers to all of that stuff. How long and who do you think would be first and how egregiously awful will it be when you go to either uh, Disney.com or Hulu.com or Netflix.com? And the moment you go there, it starts seven seconds into a show and just keeps on playing. And it's up to you to decide, do you want to go back and see that first five seconds? Or do you just want to like suddenly keep following the drama that you're going on? Because, because I'm, I'm telling you by the numbers, that's what works. How far off from that are we? I don't like that. <laughs> I agree. I, I'm, I'm not like saying any all. of us have to like it. The question is not, do we like it? The question is also not, when are they going to do it? Because we all know they're going to do it. Uh, 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 the question is, uh, or sorry, the, the question is specifically when, not if. And who? That's my, that would be yeah. my, my who's, additional question. Who's, for, is, is, who's first? Is, is it going to be CBS that does that first? Because they just don't care. They, they just do what they think is right for them. I like, all of a sudden I'm realizing that the mere fact that nobody wants to answer tells me that <laughs> that cordkillers at gmail.com. If you're listening right now, you probably you number one, you know what I say is true. Number two, you probably have a favorite pick for who's going to be first and when it's going to happen. So hit us up. Okay, it's I'll, not say again, be I'll say again. I'll say I don't like this, but I think the the service that's going to do it is probably one of the ones that's been around longer because they will feel that they're more embedded in concrete and they can try something like that without making people as yeah. mad as maybe a brand new service would do. So I think right. it'll be an older service that tries it. And so, one with that that isn't at the top. So Netflix is yeah. not going to do it because they don't have to. They've, right. They're they're doing great. Okay. So it's going to be like a CBS All Access. Somebody that that's trying to juice those numbers from behind. Before or after YouTube. YouTube, which knows you and has known you for 10 years oh, and already knows what's coming though. up next. Like, uh, uh, like, uh, will it, will it be one of the old guard that does it first or will it be YouTube that just be like, See, but if oh. YouTube does it, I feel like that's a different category because they're doing yeah. it on, on, on vlogger. Algorithmically videos. based. Yes. Yeah. Sure. 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 Yeah. So, you're, so you may be right. YouTube might be the first one to do it. All right. Let's talk about what to watch in under surveillance. Not like you. It's all about location. Uh, winter has finally got a date. HBO <laughs> released a Game of Thrones teaser and announced the show will return for its final half season on April 14th. <sighs> um, great, cool, whatever. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, 
I mean, you're skeptical. That I mean, I, I, have yeah, they done yeah. you wrong? I, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, everything they do is great. But this it's is like, not Apple. This is HBO. Look, okay, on the great list of things I know for sure is going to happen: a new <laughs> season of Game of Thrones. Also, my eventual death. Great. <laughs> I, 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 I don't have to get excited. They're both coming, no matter what. Yeah, April fourteenth is when your death is coming. I mean, Good actually, no, sorry, my financial death is, is coming, <laughs> before tax day. <laughs> Uh, Netflix, yeah, right. Netflix released a trailer for the apocalyptic series IO. Uh, in this uh, series, Earth is toxic and humanity is moving to the moon IO, uh, Jupiter's moon IO, except for Margaret Qualley and Anthony Mackie, who play two people who weren't sure they were going to make it. Now they decided they are going to make it and they're running late for the last ship. Will they make it? I don't know. You can find out when it starts this Friday, January 18th. Hey, Tom, you haven't happened to have written any science fiction novels, have you? Mm, maybe. Okay, well, 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 in your <laughs> research, did you happen to maybe look at which the most likely places to settle might be on in, in our solar system? I mean, IO is picked by a lot of people. That that, that goes back to Arthur C. Clarke and, and stuff. So really? I don't know. Sure. Okay. All right. It's warm. You, that's you're saying I, it should have been Titan. <laughs> well, wait. I mean, I, 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 uh, uh, yes. They're it, probably like, ah, eh, there's too many trademark issues with Disney if we pick Titan. <laughs> I mean, okay, okay, okay. First of all, yeah, uh, thirty seconds, geek time. Um, I, 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 you could have a floating city. You could have a dirigible yeah, yeah. city floating on the surface of Venus, and it could be exactly the same temperature as, uh, as, as Earth, right? Like, and then of course Mars. Uh, Ganymede is a better pick. Uh, Europa, of course, has liquid water somewhere underneath. Like, uh, I O is just is it's it's hell it's hell on fire this this yeah but this plays no part in the plot well yeah, no. maybe that's the problem i i don't know i haven't seen it <laughs> i don't think so okay <laughs> this is a chase movie this is are they going to make the ship on time you can rename it venus and it's the exact okay, same I, you know story. what that's what i'm going to do i'm going to decide they're going to venus yeah yeah just just t do a find and replace in the text files when you, when you i watch feel like it. we've seen this story before too so i don't i don't oh, know yeah. how affecting this is going to be. Yes, it's like called Anthony The Mackie. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah. So, uh, Netflix has a trailer for its dark time loop comedy called Russian Doll. This is produced by Amy Poehler, Natasha Lyonne, and Leslie Headland, and it stars Natasha Lyonne as a woman named Nadia who finds herself sent back to a set point in time one evening after being killed in a traffic accident. So it's Dark Groundhog Day uh, coming to Netflix February 1st. Dude, I love Dark Groundhog Day back when it was Edge of Tomorrow, and I'll watch it in any other <laughs> shape you want to give it to me. I mean, I really like Natasha Leone. She was great in Orange is the New Black, so uh, sure. You I know, mean, I'll, I'll give this one a whirl. All of the above, yeah. YouTube released a trailer for its series from Jordan Peele and Charlie Sanders called Weird City. It's a show about a world with no middle class, just a technologically privileged upper class and everybody else who lives below the line. Uh, Weird City arrives on YouTube Premium on February 13th. Tom, if you were to tell me everything you just told me without the words Jordan Peele, I would my eyes would be rolling around on the ground around me because I would have rolled them so hard. But Jordan Peele has a tremendous amount of credit in my book. And so even though what you described is an astonishingly cliched plot, I'm in, in, in because I believe in Jordan Peele. When it's an what if I tell you also Michael Sarah, Rosario Dawson, Ed O'Neill, Stephen Ewan, LeVar Burton, Laverne Cox, Jillian Jacobs, like... This was this was like watching the stock market as you said each name. Sometimes it went up, sometimes it went down. We ended up roughly even. Okay. Lavar Burton right. alone in the, the little trailer for that that I watched so was pretty interesting. His character, what yeah. you could see of it. So yeah. Um, this 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 will make me use my YouTube Premium service to try <laughs> an episode. I'm almost certain. Amazon released a trailer for the Jordan Peele produced four part documentary series on Lorena Bobbitt called Lorena coming to Sundance this month, uh, then Prime Video on February 15th. So this is not a comedy. This is like a legit documentary about Lorena Bobbitt's trial from the Lorena Bobbitt side of the story. I am unable to divorce my unbridled enthusiasm for this from my age and and i don't know that anybody under the age of 30 will care about this the way somebody in their mid 40s does the way i do now mm -hmm. uh, like like i'm stupidly excited about this uh, what about you guys Christy? yeah nope Okay. <laughs> I have zero right. interest. Sorry. <laughs> i i don't have a lot of interest either because to me 
I was the jaded, like 24 year old Austinite who thought that this media circus was just invented and stupid. And uh, while I am not like that anymore, that's where this sits in my brain, I think, well, for some reason. I, I, I think that's why I'm so excited about yeah, this is because it, it pierces the veil. Like all we saw at the time was the media circus. And the, but and I like, watch like, like, it. like, 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 like how much did, did you enjoy the Hulu uh, six hour uh, OJ Simpson thing? It felt like. Oh, okay, shame on you. Uh, uh, but, but but like it felt like they 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 pierced the veil of the media hoopla, and and I felt like I got the real story. If I could do that for this Lorena Bobbitt thing, I, I'm I'm a hundred percent in. I totally I totally get what you're saying, and it's a hundred percent true. I am either a, a empty shell of a person, or <laughs> I should have followed this closer and cared about it more then, and then I might care more about it now. No, no, neither of those are true. You should have blown it off as a bunch of media hoopla and now be happy like Brian that finally somebody's <laughs> going to pierce that veil. Didn't feel like it needed to be pierced for me. Well, I mean, it's not so much a piercing as a slicing just while he's asleep <laughs> oh, and the then drive. No, sliced no. Veil. Okay. Oh, All right. Gosh. All right. Uh, by the way, Sundance <laughs> happening in Park City, not Vail. Actually, it happens at Sundance, doesn't it? Uh, the, new, the new Captain Marvel trailer uh, came out for that movie. On uh, That movie comes out March 8th. And I everybody st- in the world watched it. I stopped. Uh, not me. Not me. I stopped watching. I stopped watching. Everybody. No, uh, everybody watched it. There, there, there gets to be this 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 hump where it becomes inevitable. And it's like, I know I'm going to see it. And it's like, there's nothing on the other side uh, except for less excitement when I watch the actual movie. So I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. It's going to be great. Christy? All things Marvel. I just so far they've done not too much wrong for me. So I will. Yeah. All things Marvel are good. Okay. Now I got something <laughs> that's going to test you. Because you probably don't either one of you care about basketball enough, but this is a really weird idea. Twitter <laughs> is going to start streaming the second half of NBA basketball games in February, and the stream will only focus on one of the 10 players on the court as chosen by the audience on Twitter during the first half. If that player is out of the game for some reason, whether they foul out or get pulled out or injured, the game stream will show the game from end court. This is uh, what <laughs> completely brilliant. It's brilliant uh-huh. beyond words. And if they do it right, there'll be some hashtag where everybody can speculate on what that one person is thinking and uh, uh, you know, hashtag uh, LeBron thoughts or whatever. And then, and then, and then just, just uh, uh, people, all of a sudden it becomes a writer's room because, because um, all of sports is a wonderful Rorschach nonsense machine onto which we ascribe uh, myths and legends and stories. And uh, it's only through the lens of people who interpret those that they become uh, things that mean something to us. So the idea of opening up essentially a live writer's room as this stuff is happening, seeing everything through the eyes where you can retweet the funniest, the cleverest, the most insightful uh, 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 LeBron thoughts or whatever. I, I, I think this is amazing. This is a brilliant idea. I think it's interesting because it's going to create more characters almost out of the players than they were even as themselves because people are going to speculate and like Brian said, create dialogue for them and create scenarios for them if they're that zoomed in on one person at a time. Could we'll be interesting. see if they do it. If, yeah. If people do it, then Brian's absolutely right. Yeah. The question is, will people who are into this also watch this part of it? While well, they're watching Twitter. and if they, yeah. so, so here's the other thing is there's there's some amount of creative energy out in the universe of people watching these events and they're going to realize, OK, the whole world is going to be trying to write thoughts and, and hot takes on the most popular characters. But if you are uh, I'll use the word smart because I don't have a better one at the moment. But but if you're sharp, if you want to be clever, you'll figure out who is maybe next to last on on the, or one of the one of the least popular of the characters and and start writing your creative like like do something totally sideways that grabs everybody's attention so somehow the seventh most popular character in the game becomes the most popular because of you the home viewer writing and and, and ascribing certain storylines to them but they have to win the vote first so it's a little bit of an egg chicken egg now well, is that way it's the second half but, because but, they but, have yeah. to vote but on the character. Okay. My 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 point is like whatever the top ten is, figure out who's next to last, and then that's the guy that you start contributing and and telling stories about. 
Mm. Well, and, and try to engagement. push for him to win the vote so you can see him in the second half. Well, and, and also this is not engagement. It is just going to be a vote on like their on their Twitter account. So yeah, it's on the TNT. It, it, it's not going to be like hashtag usage. Sure, yeah. but but like like if if you are logging into Twitter and saying I am following from this menu of ten people this person, then then my guess is certain hashtags associated with the person uh, mentioning his names or whatever. Like you could be a nobody watching this and start writing their story or your interpretation of their story and get attention so so it gives a chance for for i don't yeah. know the home audience to sort of be the the loud shouting person in the stands it's, it's a weird idea <laughs> so crazy it just might work who knows uh, also tnt doing it to keep people watching tnt so using twitter as a way to augment uh views rather than seeing twitter as a competitor to its views In interesting part of that as well all right let's talk about what we've had our eyes on christy uh what's something you watched recently that you loved um i'm very behind on movies so over the holidays i watched solo i know you can start yelling about how oh, no, 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 no. I hey I, I, you know why how about i give you a, a bring it in let's give a big old hug can i can i suggest <laughs> to you my controversial hot take that solo is my favorite star wars anything since empire i i i, I i'm i'm willing to say it is the most fun star wars movie since empire and now, see, there were so many people ripping on it when I said I was going to watch it, and I actually really liked it. I didn't see it as, yes, it's part of the universe, but I didn't see it as, like, the next Star Wars movie. It was, like, an additional Star Wars movie to me. So all the characters that they pulled in were just vibrant and bright, and the action was quick, and the dialogue was great, and just, yeah, the whole thing. I really I really quite enjoyed that. It, so it, I watched it, that over the holidays. It felt um, so good to have a low-stakes Star Wars movie. Everything else had like a billion... It was billion... fun. Yeah, exactly, yeah. right? It, yeah. it, it reminded me of what I loved about the expanded universe back in the 1990s, the reading the novels. Exactly. Um, I also been watching The Good Place, so I just watched the newest episode of that. And, uh, and Dash Ducks on Twitch. I wanted to tell you guys about this. Well, tell us about it's a, Dash Ducks. It's a Twitch account, just Twitch slash Dash Ducks. And all it is is an account where someone's got ducks in a pond and you chip in like 50 bits and it drops food for them. And it's like the most mm. chill thing to have on your desktop if you're doing nothing else and you just want something sitting it's there that's the pleasant. Twitch version of sitting in the park feeding the ducks. Yeah, pretty much. And I just thought it was so clever and just kind of cool mm. to have going on your desk if you've got nothing going on. There's a bunch of people I know that are doing the same thing, just leaving it up and running. But yeah. Jeez. So yeah. <laughs> so that and then The Good Place, I think, is just like one of the best sitcoms going right now. And I just oh, yeah. I'm just waiting for each new episode because it's just so entertaining and funny. We'll definitely so, yeah. be talking about The Good Place on Spoiler in Time. Oh, okay. All three of us have been watching that. Uh, right, Brian? Yeah, of course. Along with Dirk Gently, counterpart, uh, uh, Good Place. Uh, I went and saw the Spider-Man again a third time. Guess what? I found out the third time. You hated it. It's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, also, I watched a Vice. Uh, have you seen Vice yet? This is uh, the boss Oscar buzz movie, Christian Bale. Uh, he won uh, Critics' Choice Award. I think he won the Golden Globes for this. So, yeah, it's hot. Yeah. So uh, last week I had to bug out early in order to go see it uh, in time to appear on uh, Andrew Heaton's podcast, uh, Something's Off. And he didn't like it because it was totally unfair. And that's mm. accurate. But I said, I said, OK, no, that's what I loved about it is that it didn't attempt to to pass the ideological Turing test at all. The ideological Turing test is the idea that you could represent the opposing party's ideas so well that 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 they, they would agree and be like, yeah, that's pretty much what I believe. They did the opposite. It was like, if you're a Republican or an independent or whatever, it was like you stumbled through the woods and you found somebody standing in front of a campfire at a far left retreat telling the scariest ghost story they could about Jake Cheney. And if you appreciate it for the uh, anthropological artifact that it is, it's wonderful in that regard. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Now, uh, speaking of things you loved, you tried Bandersnatch, huh? Yeah, we made it a few choices in. And well, then you just got bored. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know. Um, my, uh, we'll we'll report. I'm not giving up. I'll, all right, I'll... all right, all right. We'll we'll leave it there then. Yeah. Um, I got two things to mention. First of all, True Detective is back for season three, and True Detective is back. It was enjoyable. They dropped two <laughs> episodes on HBO yesterday. We committed to watching one thinking like, yeah, we'll watch the other one later. Like the first one so much, we just kept going and watched uh, two. Mahershala Ali is fantastic. And they basically took a lot of what was worked about season one and reworked it for Arkansas, not New Orleans, and added 
a second timeline. So in season one, you get Matthew McConaughey's character sort of reflecting back on events and you, you bounce back and forth. With this one, you also have Mahershala Ali's character not only being interviewed the way Matthew McConaughey's character was in season one, but also as an old man who's suffering Alzheimer's being interviewed for a documentary, uh, not only about the original case in, in 1980, but a follow-up that you don't know about yet that happened in the 1990s. So it's, it's really good. So, uh, okay. Okay. This is an important decision. Do I get caught up and do we make this part of our spoiler in time ongoing stuff or do I sit back and then, and then burst it all at once? Don't get caught up. There, there is no connection between season two and season three. Just start season three. I think okay. it just means catch up on those first two episodes and stay current. Oh yeah, like, 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 co correct. Because if you're going to tell me like like you love it and you're definitely watching it week after after week, I will join you. But yeah. I, I I have to know that it's that good, and uh, otherwise I'll just watch it all at once I mean, down the road. We all have different perspectives, and you know me, I'm I'm not willing to tell anybody they'll guarantee to like something I like because we all bring our own stories into the stories. But I think there's a very good chance you're going to like it. Biggest thing to me. You clearly intend to watch it week week after week. Oh yeah, Great. I absolutely. Okay, will. I'm I'm in as yeah. well. I'll get caught up. Yeah. All right. And then the other thing, I know I texted you guys about this. Uh, Angie Tribeca is in its fourth season. They dumped the entire fourth season at the end of December on TBS. I don't know if that's a good sign, uh, but they're doing very clear parodies of individual types of shows, sometimes actually individual shows. So they have one called Scandalabra that's just a parody of Scandal. Uh, they have an episode this season called Freezing Cold Prestige Drama, which is a beautiful send up of Fargo. And with Angie Tribeca, there is a story arc, but you don't have to know anything about it. Uh, and Bobby Cannavale is in it uh, this year. Uh, the, 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 the guy from uh, Justified, uh, who was sort of the the guy who lived, worked in the trailer all the time is in it as the chief of police. So as long as you know, like it is both a parody of cop shows and this episode, particularly a parody of Fargo. I think you'll enjoy it right on. <laughs> all right, Bryce, what should we be on the lookout for? Hey, I got a little bit of news on in the lookout today. So you if you keep up with the Netflix, like I follow the Netflix YouTube account. So there are always new trailers for stuff. They have been promoting their new film. Uh, fire the greatest party that never happened which is about the uh the infamous 2017 fire <laughs> fell fire festival uh that that trailer came out on the 10th uh it is the 14th today and the idea was okay well this is going to come out on the 18th and uh today was the day that the press embargo for uh fire came out and so all the news stories have, all, have been running their reviews on it well hulu went and uh, surprise released their own documentary on the fire festival called fire fraud this had been this had been announced a while ago but there was no date and so now out of nowhere they scooped netflix by four days it's it's it, it also by the way hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on, hold on. Okay. let me wrap my mind around this right like they <laughs> knew like this was no accident like 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 hulu said okay they're gonna cover this space we're gonna cover this space we know their embargo date what if we mm -hmm. release and nobody has any uh there are no reviews there are no early press there are no anything our entire press engine is however much noise netflix wants to make about that plus four day early jump on it but basically not only that the hulu one which is called fire fraud uh, actually has interviews with billy mcfarland the creator of the fire festival the netflix one does not have these interviews and so, so it might be better than the, uh, it, it might be, we do not know. Oh my God. <laughs> so I, I got a chance to watch about a half of half of this. Uh, it's, it's a 90 minute documentary, uh, before the show today. I think this is a really interesting topic. Uh, it gives a lot of background information on Billy, um, uh, his career in, in, in trying to do tech startups. He, he was, uh, the founder of a, of a, a, a credit card service, which, uh, turned into him. Uh, uh, starting this fire festival and and uh, getting into all of the behind the scenes, the six months leading up basically of them trying to set up this festival, which does not exist. And it's 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 really it, it's really interesting to see um, because not only do they talk to to Billy, but they also talk to some of the people who worked for the festival some of the people who were uh reporting and investigating this uh they talked to a man who apparently was running a a uh twitter account at fire fraud which was sort of a thorn in their side uh as the the the, the lead up to to the festival started 
and there's a really strong thread that 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 you that emerges of like uh robbing peter to pay paul right of like okay well uh, you know i told people i would have these 200 hamilton tickets so uh, uh uh i i'm just going to like try to get them and then if i can't get them i'll get them on StubHub the day before and while i'm giving them the tickets i'm going to sell them tickets to the super bowl tickets that i don't have uh but then that 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 goes into like the the festival it, it doesn't have any money doesn't have enough money nor time they don't own an island they own they got uh, the parking lot of a sandals that's where the festival is not an island but basically the parking lot the of parking sandals. lot of a sandals the punchline from the office <laughs> uh you know and 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 even the little intricacies of that right like days it's coming up and and all the festival uh uh, uh ticket holders get an email saying hey we're gonna do cashless bands it's a very common thing you know you should uh we recommend 300 dollars a day of of for however long you're gonna be there as a means to get money to pay for all of the stuff that is still not paid for. Um, so so if I'm hearing you correctly, uh -huh. this is a how-to of our first big music festival that we're going to have at the new property. <laughs> yes? No. No. But you no, you watch you these documentaries, Brian. <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. sorry. <laughs> By the way, you own the property. <laughs> you own that property. Yeah, step one. I already screwed it up. I own the property. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, don't, I, I, don't have it at the property. you got to have it at the parking lot of a sandal. <laughs> All right, good I point. I demand to point. be paid in advance if I'm performing. <laughs> yes. yes. Right, of course. We'll pay you in Super Bowl tickets. Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> and so I'm, I, I'm, excited. I'm excited to go home and finish watching this. And it also perversely makes me want to watch the Netflix one when it comes out on Friday. Oh, of course. Kind of yeah. to see That'd how different they are. Yeah. Well, and, and, and it's it's almost as though uh, they took the natural thing that Netflix does where they do a fictionalized account of a real thing and then they couple it like you watch uh, uh, the King of Polka uh, or the Polka King or whatever and mm -hmm. then and then uh, the, uh, the man who would be King of Polka, uh, the documentary right after, it's almost as though they're taking advantage of that natural synergy of you watch the one thing and you want to watch the other take of the same thing only they happen to be on different networks. Yeah, I, I, I and and to be clear, I'm sure they're both documentaries. I don't think one. Sure, 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 sure. But yeah, there, there is a synergy of these two things coming out and this being a little news item. So I, 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 I right now, I think it makes me want to watch it. But Friday could come around and I can be like completely satisfied with this. So it's a really <laughs> crazy move by Hulu. It does seem like a decent documentary. And the fact that they got Billy McFarland uh, to to talk on camera about this, I, I don't think they hold his feet to the fire close enough as much as I'd like. I mean, this is a man who was but but that's again a multi million like, dollar. You fraud. might have the better documentary not talking to him because he never said anything, right? So it's hard right. to hard to say. Well, and watching him. and and that's another concern I have watching uh, halfway through is like, well, uh, the good opening there's a good bit of talking about like his childhood and all the great things people say about him like you, you but, but enough of that but between the lines like you think okay if they got him what quiet guarantees behind the scenes indicated mm -hmm. just how soft they would go on him but in then, order to do that but it is weird because like they get um so part of the the big whirlwind around the fire festival was a big social media push that uh, taking advantage of like influencer uh uh, uh business arrangements right and like they have one of the guys from the company that they hired from the jerry media whatever like one of the guys working the campaign to talk about what a mess it was like as like credited to working on that campaign it it it, it there are so many first-hand accounts and it's very blatant that this isn't that this went poorly um so i don't know it would be nice to see the netflix one to get like a, a sense of relatively how easy or hard yeah. harsh it is. On so, it. so, so it sounds to me like from what you've seen so far, the Hulu one is definitely an indictment of how this went down. So is your, is your inherent take that the Netflix one will be an even harsher indictment or maybe oh, I possibly, say. okay. Right. I, I, I have not seen the Netflix too, one. Too we soon do not to predict press okay. anything with that. Yeah. Yet. Um, but I, my, my, from what I've seen of the reviews of the Netflix one, it's kind of light on Ja Rule's involvement. Kind of uh, maybe doesn't put any blame on him because Ja Rule is considered part of this. He was the spokesman. Well, let's, yeah. let's watch it. Let's watch it before we, you know, this is all yeah. fine. We can find out all of this stuff by actually, you That's know, right. if you take a look at it. So Fire Fraud, F-Y-R-E, Fraud is on Hulu now. And then uh, Fire, F-Y-R-E, is coming to Netflix this Friday. As Gauchem said... In the chat room, shots fired. <laughs> <laughs>
If you got something we should be on the lookout for, email us cordkillers at gmail.com. And then after you do that, go buy a comedy album. Hey, man. Uh, yeah, not just a comedy album, but the best one that we've done so far. If you guys are familiar with our little show, Night Attack, we do it every Tuesday night. It's a companion piece to, to Cord Killers. Uh, we uh, do comedy albums here or there. Uh, this is, I think, the best, tightest, most friendliest to outsiders comedy album we've ever done uh our intention is and this may change between now and release time if there's a reason to but but we're releasing it for the minimum cost possible a dollar 99 it's uh it's 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 uh it, it's uh, just under 50 minutes long and man oh man does it sing it is so short and it's literally it, it's it's basically a celebration of one of our greatest fans Stevens Cog Stephen Cogswell listens to every episode takes a bunch of out of context quotes every time we we make up like half thought up dog roll he turns it into beautiful beautiful music and it's amazing it's 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 a magic trick is what it is and it's definitely worth your time so uh the it album has the music it has commentary on the music it has some extra bonus comedy tracks let people know what's on. you know you you get kind of a lot of stuff on this right correct and uh, uh the album is called all All's well. It's going to release on uh, Tuesday, January 22nd, but hopefully uh, uh, do do some poking around. Search for a night attack and uh, hopefully go to nightattack.tv to sign up for the mailing list. So when it's available to order or pre-order, you will find out. Just go to nightattack.tv, scroll down to the bottom. You'll see mailing list. Put your email in there so you stay up to date with what's going on. Yes. All of that. All right. Let's move on to the front lines. Front lines. Last week, HBO announced that Naomi Aki, who's also appearing in Star Wars Episode Nine, will star in the Game of Thrones prequel series. Aki joins Naomi Watts and Josh Whitehouse, among others who have previously been announced. Also, Jessica Jones and Defenders director S.J. Clarkson will direct the pilot episode. Still uh, not a real name. The working title is The Long Night. Christy. That's what I've only like five. Are there like five shows coming up that are Game of Thrones related? If I'm no, I they put concept? all the others on hold. This is the oh, only one that's oh. been greenlit for now. Okay. Okay. Cool. So, so, so how, how does that shape your excitement for all of this? Like, are you stoked? Are you in? I want to see it. Definitely. Nah, that's a tepid response. All right. Anyway, in addition <laughs> to reports of a Spider Gwen movie, the New York Times says Sony is considering making an animated TV show based on characters introduced in Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Gotta admit, guys, a little bit conflicted on how I feel about this. It's like, uh, I go, where do you go from perfection? Yeah, not up. Right. But if you make TV shows, they're not going to be held to the same standard. So if you've got a spider ham show that's a hit with kids, that could be fine and not hurt the actual. Trend. I'd be OK with that. Yeah. <laughs> Mini series with, 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 with spider noir. I'd be OK with that, mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. I mean, DreamWorks, yeah. this is DreamWorks' M.O. Yeah. I, 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 any make any make any movie and then make a kid series. Out I, I have peeked in on some of the Dragon Riders, uh, uh, Dragons of Burke uh, series. Uh, they're they're not bad. Um, That's a How to Chain Your Dragon spell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, I just I, I don't know how to. Ooh, I'm just so nervous because the movie was so good. Sony does make good might TV. De might depend on which characters they they pull out too. Though yeah. it might depend on yeah if they don't pick. Main I do I do want to see more of Penny Parker character. with uh with her diva clone. You know. Uh, yeah, that's another robot. one that could easily be a TV series. I think yeah. for sure. Uh, uh, TiVo said it will launch a full featured app that lets you view live and DVR recordings on non TiVo boxes. Fire TV gets the app first in Q2. And after that, it'll come to Android, Roku, and eventually Apple TV. Uh, previously, you needed a TiVo mini if you wanted to access recordings remotely. TiVo is also introducing a Wi Fi adapter for the mini if you have one of those. Uh, but just in time for people to stop caring about DVRs, you can now access your DVR easier than ever. Also, in related, <laughs> in your face, Roku News, Amazon announced that Fire TV boxes have more than 30 million active users, which would push it ahead of the Roku. That's an increase of 5 million since October. Roku announced last week it has 27 million active accounts. Ooh, In your new, face, Roku. New <laughs> champion, Fire TV. Now on top, because they're the place everybody buys everything so they can push it in front of you. You. Yep. Uh, Star Trek Picard series creator Alan Kurtzman, he's actually the EP for all the Star Trek stuff coming out of CBS, says the series will tie into the events mentioned in the J.J. Abrams movie Star Trek. Basically, the fall of the Romulan Empire that spurs the events in the Abrams movie has a big effect on Jean-Luc Picard in the Prime universe, since Picard was an ambassador to Vulcan and working with Spock on reunification with Romulus. 
So there's your setup for Star Trek Picard. Also, CBS All Access confirmed that Michelle Yeoh will star in a Star Trek Discovery spinoff series about Captain Giorgio's role in Starfleet's mysterious Section 31 with uh, Kurtzman and Rod Roddenberry, executive producing that one. Christy, uh, does that strike you as, as a little bit of trying to have your cake and eat it, too, where it's like, oh, no, 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 we're in the new universe and that we're at the tail end of the old universe before no, it got it doesn't, re- released. Because it's all going to happen in the old universe. Well, correct. And, and you have a thing from the old universe that crossed over into the Abrams verse, right? But sure. We're not necessarily we're not going to see Picard cross over. If we were seeing that, then yes. That, then that's then what I'm, I'm saying. Is like 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 if that's the case, then why are you mentioning anything about the new reboot? Because the they're universe? saying, hey, that thing that happened, that's going to be what Picard's dealing with. Like the Romulan Empire has fallen apart and that it's it's less I, th- I think you're taking it as a like, hey, if you loved Abrams Star Trek, we're going to no, that's not I don't think that's what they're saying. They're saying Picard is a broken man because of the same things that broke the guy in Star Trek. But we're not trying to make the Abrams Star Trek and this be the same thing. Sure. I, I, I guess it, I, I just would suppose it would be possible to say that without mentioning like literally nothing about this Picard thing seems to have anything to do with the J.J. Abrams reboot. Uh, they're just saying those well, words. It's saying the fall of the Romulan Empire and everybody's immediately going to ask because this is how Star Trek people are. Is it the fall of the Romulan Empire that caused the Abrams Star Trek? And of course, Kurtzman is like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> OK, I'm just gonna I, I, get that I, I, out of the way now. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. If, if that's the the uh, thank you, Christy, for your insight. That was really great. I'm glad you <laughs> piped up on that uh, during the Super Bowl. CBS says it will use 14 cameras to create live virtual graphics. It's called augment. Uh, it's calling augmented reality in, quote, never before seen field level views. CBS will also use multiple 8K cameras so it can provide dramatic close ups unavailable at lower resolutions. CBS says viewers will can watch the Super Bowl. Without signing in, the Super Bowl is February 3rd. Uh, 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 no word yet on, on whose pores are being signed to which sponsor. Now are they going to do that for the halftime show as well? Use all the fancy cameras and whatnot for the Maroon 5 Travis Scott big boy performance? Oh, it's maybe? all three? <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, 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 all fields there, NFL. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, we'll, we'll need augmented reality to, to see just how old the members of Maroon 5 actually are. Oh. <laughs> They're my age. Is- <laughs> We're going to get to the point where it's like a follicle 478 is licensed by Lysol <laughs> and follicle 725 is... is, is For the is, dramatic close-up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. If you zoom in, you can see Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> Powered by Pepsi. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's get to the dispatches from the front. <laughs> Got an email from Evan that says, Hey, killers, wanted to let you guys know I received Roku speakers as a gift for quest, uh, from Christmas from my mother-in-law. What sound qual- uh, The sound quality is not as quite as good as the sound bar that they replaced, but guess what? This is another instant of, you guessed it, convenience trumping fidelity. These speakers just work. My wife is thrilled. I'll say, though, every now and again, I'll notice a hiccup when I switch sources. Still a small price to pay compared to our daily sound bar resets and our old setup and likely something that will get fixed on an update. What is most interesting, though, is the sheer craziness of how my wife and non-tech savvy mother-in-law had to collude to purchase these things. Wife had to get in my password man- manager, find out my Roku account info, then log in, use my credentials to purchase my own present. Then, of course, it lo- I lost all element of surprise when I got the confirmation email saying thank you for my uh, order. Uh, given th- that strange barrier to entry, I'm not sure if these speakers will be a bang or a bust in the long term, but I got to say, in the near term, I like them, and so does the wife, and I I heard about them from you guys. So kudos, your boss, Evan. Thank you very much, boss. We appreciate it. Glad they worked out for you. Uh, Joe in Wilmington, Delaware suggests for the person heading to Antarctica, uh, not being able to phone home for DRM, maybe they could use Play On. Now, Play On works by providing a cloud service that you have legitimate access to accounts like Netflix or iTunes or whatever, and it makes a fair use recording of what you're playing and then offers that to you DRM free. Play on's been around for a long time and they haven't been sued out of existence. So presumably they're not illegal, but maybe they're illegal, but nobody's figured out they want to sue them. Also, it seems to be a little buggy uh, depending on who you ask, but 
uh, it's the best and only suggestion we've got so far. So thank you, Joe. Well, in, and <laughs> along those lines, I, I will divulge. Uh, Ten years ago, I think I signed up for Play On, and I played it because it, there used to be no way to legitimately stream to your gaming console, whether it be an Xbox, uh, Xbox, PS4, or any of that stuff. Uh, what you could do is you could download content through whatever method you wanted to to your desktop. And basically it was just a bridge streaming from your desktop to your uh, game console. And uh, I, I, once I signed up for them, I continued to get emails as they evolved over time. But it seems to me like if it's okay to download content legally to your desktop and then to stream that content to your, your game station in your living room, then it seems to me legally like the Betamax ruling of time delay would would uh, or, or, or uh, would would apply here, but 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 I'm you know more about this than than I do, Tom. Yeah, and and I'm not willing to say. So you know <laughs> they haven't, they haven't they've been around for a long time and haven't been sued. That's your best indicator. Yeah, uh, I agree. Uh, got an email that says greetings, fellow coworkers. I say that since I don't want to make you former coworker as one of your bosses, but Tom, oh Tom. How could you let me down so hard after all these years? On episode 250, you talked about a website to tell you if a show had an ending or not, and you mentioned Timeless. Quick pause. This is Brian commenting. We got 12 of these emails. This is just representative of the 12 emails that we got, Tom. I was flabbergasted that you thought it ended without resolution. Was going to call you out, but since it's the new year, I'm trying to turn over a new leaf. I'll just assume you were busy and missed the amazing two-hour timeless Christmas special that did wrap up not only season two, but the series as well. So if you have not seen it, definitely check it out. And then whomever does decide to make uh, diditend.com <laughs> can allow you to add your thoughts on the timeless series finale. Cheers to the more card killing in 2019, Troy. Thank you so much, Troy. Appreciate it. You and all of the people who chimed in to let Tom know he's wrong. It's my favorite thing about yep. this show. I am uh, New Year's resolution always going to be wrong. So there'll be plenty <laughs> more opportunities for you to feel good about yourself. I, I actually have to admit that I like that show and I didn't know there was a special either. Yeah, so, I, Tom, I missed I it as well. I just didn't know. So, oh. yeah, I have failed everyone. I will now <laughs> fall on my sword. Uh, we also got an email from Lou who said, hi, Tom, Brian, and Bryce, but I'm sure he would have included Christy had he known she was going to be on the show. Uh, he said, I know you guys may have mentioned the service Shudder a few weeks back, and I wanted to give you a recommendation for something streaming on Shudder. Joe Bob Briggs, a horror movie critic and former horror show host from the 80s and 90s, has several streaming marathons on Shudder called Last Drive-In with Joe Bob Briggs. He had a show on the movie channel, not sure of its title, later on TNT, called Monster Vision that ended in the early 2000s. I was a huge fan and watched those shows throughout high school. Best part is that the films are not edited for TV and his color comments are not censored either. So, uh, yeah, if you know Joe Bob Briggs, I know there's a lot of fans of Joe Bob Briggs out there. Uh, good to know that he's on Shudder doing his thing. That's awesome. Well, and most importantly, uh, he's sort of the uh, the exemplar that I've always held in my heart as, as you know, we've talked about the the value of, of a, a, a pop culture DJ, somebody who's going to be a local Sherpa to take you through certain waters and, you know, horror movies and schlock are one of those things that I don't feel comfortable Want Anime is another one of the things that I don't want to wander around by my own. I want somebody who knows what they're talking about to guide me through the experience and joe bob briggs is a great example exemplar of that and another great exemplar of awesome music and twitch streaming and being a guest on cord killers is christy cates thank you again for being with us today christy thank you guys thanks for having I'm glad to see you guys again it's been a yeah. while so i'm very glad to see you guys again thanks hey Good man to see you too and uh, if folks want to find out where you're doing your thing online where should they go Oh, twitch.tv slash Christy Cates, and it's K-R-I-S-T-I-K-A-T-E-S. We're doing music shows Monday, Friday, and Saturday nights, adding a gaming show in a couple weeks. And Twitter is a place where you can also find out all about all the scheduling and what time and day and all that stuff. Yep. This is twitter.com Christy Cates. For, so, for, yeah. for the record, I went to twitch.tv slash Christy Cates, and I went to, to click subscribe, and it said uh, that'll be a billion dollars. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Turns out it's totally free. Totally free, costs you nothing, means a lot to you. I, I was wrong about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Twitch.tv Twitch slash Christy Cates. What oh, are you going to say? You. Oh, I was going to say you can subscribe for, for free if you have Twitch Prime. So you can actually do that, like Brian said. So, yeah, Excellent. be cool. Our website is cordkillers.com. Our email address is cordkillers at gmail.com. We're live on twitch.tv slash night attack, which is also carried on diamondclub.tv. Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk to you next time. Hey guys, Brian and Tom here, and it's just the same old message at the end of the credits, just like always.
That's right, Brian. Nothing new here except your name showing up. Oh my gosh! Because I've you got a just name. Supported us on Patreon. Yeah, all those five dollar donors. Look at that. That's your name in pixels. We're gonna make you famous, kid. Put your There's name some in pixels on the internet. Names in there. But some of you are new. Some of you aren't there. It's sad. What can they do, Brian? I mean, they could go to patreon.com slash cord killers and pledge $5 an episode to be one of these amazing people like this the one. Amazing. Oh, look at look at that name right there. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>